Hey guys, can you see me? Hear me? Hi, Fakti. Am I audible? Am I visible? Yes, I am not late. Yeah, late by a minute. I think my OBS dropped. Sorry for being late. Okay. So let's start. So today we are going to have a quick look at uh, all the uh, useful stains. Uh, the primary idea of uh, putting the stains here is one of the students asked that uh, they had an uh, internal assessment where uh, a question was asked on stains. See, stain something is uh, which is important, which actually a compilation of uh, many things. Like we used to read stains in a different place. When we went to general pathology, yeah, we read a few stains in uh, cell injury chapter. Few will read in inflammation chapter. Few might we might be reading later on, right? So this is primarily to compile everything and to give you that okay these are the stains required if you have a five mark or if you are in a viva you might definitely answer them one or two points for that fine good evening guys okay let's start so melanin uh, what i'm going to do is there, there will be stain these are this uh, there'll be uh, what i'm going to stain these will be the stains and this will be the image of the stain and also give you one or two use cases of the stains right perfect good evening guys okay so first of all i want you to help me with this what will be the color of each of the substances in a routine HNE, then I'll be telling you the stain, the use cases, and how it will look in a light microscopy. Fine. Can anyone tell me what will be the color of melanin in a light uh, HNE? It's a simple question, right? Melanin is not black, it is brown, right? The normal color of melanin is brown. The stain which is used to identify melanin, which might not be the routine use case, but if someone is saying that I want to say prove it is a melanoma, I need a uh, color to be seen or in case of a depigmentation or a hyperpigmentation if I require I might require this the stain is mass and fontana mass and fontana is a commonly done stain other one is smaller stain smaller stain though it's great it's not that commonly used uh, in routine diagnostic pathology fine okay and this is how this is a normal slide of a skin and you can see that this part this part has been highlighted with the help of mass and fontana the basal epithelium or the basal layer of epidermis where you see the normal melanocytes in melanin that's been highlighted here right now can anyone tell me where all you can use the stain of mass and fontana or smaller stain whatever comes to your mind Hi, in this disease i might use them it might be helping for me what 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 comes to your mind use case primarily any pigmented lesions right uh, you can just write just pigmented lesions of skin because i can use them for any pigmented lesions but if you want to write some cancer, most likely your melanoma, right? Melanoma, there is something called a nevus. We will read about nevus soon. Nevus is a benign condition of melanocytes, benign tumor of melanocytes. Nevus is nothing but moles. You have moles, no? That's what here it is. Perfect loss girl. I can use it for melanoma or in any pigmented lesions of skin. There is something you must have heard uh, during pregnancy. You have melasma, colasma. Pigmentation will be there more during pregnancy due to hormonal imbalance. There also I can use. Sometimes to document there is no pigmentation in vitiligo. I can use them saying that yes it is negative. Right. Both positive and negative will help for me. Right. Perfect. The next is hemosudin. Same routine. I want you guys to comment what will be the color of hemosudin in a light microscopy. Only then we will be going to the next. Without commenting, we are not moving at all. Tell me. The color of hemosudin. Hemosudin is nothing but iron, right? Iron, normally when it rusted in real life, it is going to be brownish in color. Same thing here, right? Textbooks might say brown, golder brown, different colors of brown. But I don't think in a microscope you can differentiate a golden brown from an yellowish brown. It is brown in color. That's all right. It's hemosudin. It's a pathological iron deposit. It's not a physiological iron deposit. Whenever I see hemosudin in any part of the pathology textbook, it's almost always pathological. Physiological iron will be stored in the form of ferritin and not a hemosudin. Right? Great. It's brown. And the stain, what I'm going to use for hemosudin is pearls Prussian blue. Or I can just call it Prussian blue. Or I can just call it pearl stain. Any combination, if it's there in an exam, please remember it's an iron stain, iron cast stain, right? Pearls blue or Prussian blue or pearls Prussian blue. What will be the outcome? It's there. What will be the color? Blue. Prussian blue is a color. If you are into arts and crafts and everything, you must have definitely heard about Prussian blue color. A very peculiar variant of blue color, right? This is the Prussian blue color. Okay. There's a positivity. This is a positive slide will look anywhere. Okay. Use case. Lost girl, hemolytic anemia. 
Yes, I might, but can anyone tell me any other use case of excess iron deposition? I am not saying hemolytic anemia, I won't use them. I will use them only in few conditions of hemolytic anemia, not everything. Anyone, what what, uh, what comes to your mind? Okay, I need to demonstrate iron in this pathogenesis. Anything, which anything which comes to your mind. I'll tell you one or two use cases, that should be more than enough. Anything, come on. Have you heard about a disease called as hemochromatosis, hemosiderosis? You might have, right? Even your physiology must have heard about that. Excess iron deposition, right? Hemochromatosis, hemosiderosis, but I have excess iron deposition, I can definitely use perspiration blue because they'll be positive, right? That's one use, use case, right? Second, if I have to identify bone marrow's iron, there are few places where I need to know whether the bone marrow iron is proper or not. As simple as iron deficiency anemia, where the bone marrow iron will be completely negative. There I can use it. There are few conditions which you'll be reading in WBC disorders, like myelodysplastic syndrome. We have something called ring syndroblast. There also we can use it, right? FE is iron, bone marrow is iron level. I can use it in IDAS, iron deficiency anemia, and few things called MDS, myelodysplastic syndrome, where I can use it, right? Next, there is something called an asbestos lung disease like coal affecting the lung and occupational lung disease of asbestos exposure asbestos lung disease definitely there's a structure called as ferruginous bodies right that will be positive here because ferruginous bodies again is based on iron right it's ferruginous body it's iron laden asbestos fiber that also be positive these are few use cases and in general pathology we have read something i want you guys to comment if you can remember a patient with an heart failure right heart or left heart, eventually the right heart undergoes failure. There'll be an excess of back pressure happening to the left heart, back pressure happening to the lungs. The lungs become chronically congested and there'll be a little bit of bleeding happening, hemorrhage happening and the pulmonary alveolar macrophages will eat them and what is the cell we call it? I'm sure you know the cell. We did read them in your hemodynamics chapter. What is it called? We call them heart failure cell, right? So heart failure cell, this came in the last year NEET PG exam, right? A heart failure cell also will be positive for your iron, right? So all these are use cases, some use cases of iron. Like I said, we when you go to hematology and systemic pathology, we'll read lots and lots of blue use cases. Yes, not in every hemolytic anemia, few of them that definitely we'll read in future, fine? Okay, next, lipid, fat, my favorite. What will be the color in uh, normal HNE? Can anyone tell me the color of normal fat in HNE? Normal fat color? Fat is always clear, right? The reason fat is clear is, Fat will be washed away during the process of uh, processing of the tissue and fixing the tissue. The alcohol used during processing, we saw in the previous class, how do we process, right? We use alcohol to replace and remove the water or dehydration, right? In that step, the fat also will be sucked out and we remove, that's the reason we have clear, right? It is colorless or clear, so I do need a fat stain to identify fat. We have two fat stains and one of the important questions they keep asking in YY is, if I am going to use a routine processing, fat will be empty, clear. So obviously fat stain cannot be used and these stains are visible only in one place, only in frozen section. We had a class on frozen section also, have a look at them whenever required, right? Frozen section, it will be possible, oil redo and Sudan black. How will oil redo look? The same, it's there in the name, right? Red and Sudan black will be black. Sudan black's abbreviation is Sudan black B is SBB or Sudan black 4, Sudan black 5, there are multiple Sudan blacks, right? SBB, Sudan black B, okay, it's Sudan black B. So if an examiner asks what does SBB stain for or what does Sudan black stain for, you should be able to answer. It's a fat stain, right? And the use case of fat stain actually is very minimal. Though there is a fatty liver condition, but can I say, you can easily say, ha, it is fat with a history correlating the microscopy. I don't require to use fat stain in real life, but yes, if at all required for a postgraduate purpose, there are a few diseases where I do require to demonstrate fat in a frozen section. There it might be as well. For undergraduate, this is more than enough. I'm not going to use it any any further. Fine. Okay. Next, glycogen. Can anyone tell me what will be the color of glycogen in a normal HNE? We had covered this in the intracellular accumulation in the first class, in the first chapter. Anyone, anyone, come on. I'm sure you guys know. Glycogen has two colors. It could be a pale pink in color or it could be clear based on the deposition of glycogen. If it's little bit, slightly paler pink in color, if it's excess, it becomes clear. It's based on the accumulation, it changes, right? And glycogen is PAS positive. If you guys remember, I'm going to leave it a second. I can also use them in diabetes. If you remember again in first, first uh, year physiology, in diabetes, there'll be glycosuria. 
so obviously my proximal connective tubule will reabsorb them reabsorb them and then stores them in diapetus in the proximal connective tubule i can see that uh, glycogen deposit we call it armani epstein lesion okay we'll read about armani epstein lesion and diabetic changes in the kidney when you come to renal pathology for now we'll uh, look at that right yes fact i also felt a lag i don't know why what happened i'll just have a look at it my streaming is fine okay i hope it's back now fine okay next we'll go for protein anything protein again h and e protein is going to be same pinkish in color but protein is going to be pas positive and will be diastase resistant okay pas positive and diastase resistant here right perfect got so proteins use case of pas positive diastase resistant in liver we read about a disease called as an alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency right please don't forget that but the same enzyme same stain pas positive diastase resistant will be positive in one more condition as well but that's not protein right we have an infectious disorder you we you will be reading them when you go to your microbiology or in medicine right a disease called as an whipple's disease triforama whipple is the organism and in whipple's disease in intestine you will see macrophages which will be pas positive diastase system they are not staining the protein there they are staining the organism there they are also allowed diastase resistant. but yes any protein deposit i will have pas positivity and it will be resistant to diastase digestion right perfect next is calcium this is an age old mnemonic every pathology resident knows that it's k a r l for c a l we use it k a l k for your cosa cosa is the most common done stain for calcium every hospital every lab every college will have this alizar and red is a very good stain it's a best stain for calcium but it's expensive so they might not use it for research purpose if you want to see because alizar and red will even identify elemental calcium so when i say elemental calcium ca2 plus in ionic state also it will identify but one cosa generally picks up the calcium salts so for diagnostic purpose salts is enough for me for an understanding or research purpose calcium elemental calcium also might be required for me that's why commonly uses one cosa and the best stain for calcium is by default alizarin red right this also came in a recent neat page exam about alizarin red and as the name says this is alizarin red and obviously this is one cosa one cosa will have a blackish color fine okay perfect next we'll go for copper can anyone tell me what's a microscopic uh, h and e color for copper we missed that for calcium H and E for calcium. Calcium will always be having a bluish tinge, right? For copper, anyone? What will be the stain? What will be the color of copper in H and E? Copper. You must have seen copper utensils, na? No? Same color. It will be same brownish color. Copper has multiple stains. I have rhodamine, rhodamine or rhodamine. Anything is fine, right? Rhodamine is stain. Rhodamine is a procedure. So rhodamine. Rubionic acid or sin stain. All three are copper stains. There are multiple more copper stains, but something which is which I like is orsine because orsine diagnostically is a bit better. This is actually an orsine stain, okay, which you can easily see in a liver biopsy. Tell me one disease which comes to your mind when you see. Remember excess of copper in case of liver deposit. I'll give you a clue. It also has a ring in the eye. Excess copper deposit in the liver. We have a disease called an. You must have read in your first year, right? Wilson's disease. Kasher Fleischer ring or a KF ring, right? That's something which you have to remember. That's one of the only use cases where you use copper in diagnostic pathology. Apart from that, we don't use much of copper in diagnostic pathology. Fine? Perfect. Then we'll come to mucin. See, mucus can be seen in multiple places. Salivary gland has mucin. Respiratory has mucin. Entire GIT has mucin. Starting from stomach till my rectum. Right, entire GIT produces mucin, right? Lung can produce mucin, the bronchioles can produce mucin. In any other words, anywhere have a columnar lining is capable of producing mucin. But not all mucin is the same. It has different, different texture, different, different uh, pH, and different, different stains form, right? In general, I have three stains for mucin PS, Alchin Blue, Music Armen. Okay, Music Armen will be staining your salivary gland mucin primarily. That's a beautiful stain for salivary gland mucin. PAS can stain neutral mucin. This came once in AIMS exam. A for A. Acid blue stains acidic mucin, right? Remember that. That's a, again a good stain for acidic mucin, right? So PAS normally, if it's positive, it'll have a magenta color. Okay. Alcyon blue, as the name says, it'll be bluish in color, right? If you look at this, look at this image, these glands, which are pinkish, are actually PAS positive neutral mucin. 
these glands which are bluish is actually an alkene blue positive because they are acidic mucin mucin itself is very 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 complex for an undergraduate if you know that ha huh, acidic mucin your alkene blue is positive for an mcq purpose mucic carmen salivary gland mucin is positive and ps will be positive in barrett's and the uh, uh, stomach and uh, colonic tumors that's a uh, colonic uh, lining epithelium that should be more than enough for you guys right okay next one maybe last for today's right amyloid can anyone tell me what will be the normal h and e color of amyloid we will read amyloid in the next class in your che batch amyloid is a protein uh, altered protein so h and e of amyloid will be pinkish in color right because an altered or an al formed or an mal uh, it's not properly folded protein right it's a deposit so it's pink in color right amyloid is pink in color in a light microscopy so the stain what i used to identify amyloid is congo red but the outcome is very different if i do congo red and i use a normal microscope normal microscope which is happening having in a college we'll have a color called as a salmon pink color okay it's a pink salmon is a fish the color of the fish's flesh orange is pink color is what you will see in case of an amyloid in normal light microscopy you have the amyloid like fakti said i do a congo red stain but i use a polarized microscopy we have read about polarized microscopy also in this lecture series right in the first lecture of light microscopy we missed go to that when you use a polarized microscopy you see a color that's your apple green birefringence in your mcq in your viva anywhere please see what they are asking if they are asking congo red in light microscopy it looks salmon pink if they are asking congo red in polarized light it looks apple green birefringence right so these are few important stains which i want you to remember at this point of time see there are multiple more stains we have a stain called as an vvg this is primarily a stain for elastic tissue so the primary use case of vvg will be in the vessels you must have read about internal elastic lamina external elastic lamina those places yes it will be useful in vascular pathology not much outside right if you talk about vascular it is if you talk about uh, aneurysm if you talk about dissections yes i i might uh, use them with of van giesen right so there are multiple stains we will keep on adding to them but these are the basics once you cover the basics rest everything are additional whenever we go to systemic pathology be it lung be it stomach be it kidney we'll add a little bit more to it so that our entire learning of pathology will not be hampered the last but not the least the biggest thing is immunohistochemistry right immunohistochemistry is our markers these are markers which is primarily used to diagnose cancers fine we did have a uh, study on immuno uh, immunofluorescence microscopy right the same principle i have an antigen i have an antibody i have a different color in immunofluorescence the positive color is brown in color this came in an inict exam please don't forget this the reason for the positive color is brown is dab which is di amino benzene okay we read this in the graph rejection class study in the nishay batch right a di amino benzene so when you have a di amino benzene which is brown in color which means positive in case of an amino histochemistry do remember that right thank you rose girl so that's about these stains which you have to remember if you have any five marks saying that compile all the stains use this use this and write definitely you might get a decent mark for the exam question right so any time some see it's not always the questions will be asked what is there in the book they might ask to compile whenever any question comes asking you to compile things think for a second think for 30 seconds compile all the informations what you know and write compilation you can write more than a static topic don't worry if they are something to compile you have already learnt it it's lost somewhere in the head right you can definitely pull it and put it in the exam paper fine thank you guys if any doubts do let me know if not see you in the next class